Hi, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Friday, September the 30th. Gee, it's all about Donald Trump today, isn't it? You know he lost the debate Monday night. You perhaps know if you paid any attention to the news that what really irked him Monday night was Hillary Clinton bringing up some awful things he'd said and done toward a Miss Universe contestant many years ago, Alicia Machado of Venezuelan. Well, he just won't let go. He was twittering at 5 a.m. this morning about, again, about what an awful she person she was. You ought to look at her sex tapes. There's nothing to that, by the way. So that's Donald Trump. We're used to that. But Leslie Rutledge, the Attorney General of Arkansas, continues on her rounds as one of his chief spokesmen on national cable TV channels. She was on two channels this morning, CNN and MSNBC. And again, it's not Donald Trump who's to blame. It's Hillary Clinton started this. It's the old playground routine of, well, she started it. It doesn't matter that Donald Trump has continued to say offensive things all week long. She continued to, to put out the Trump campaign talking point that somehow Hillary Clinton, although she's done no wrong, somehow caused terrible things to be done to women. She cited no evidence of this, by the way. She just simply says things that facts that don't have any bearing and proof. She doesn't do a good job representing Arkansas, it seems to me, but it seems that Donald Trump's happy with her and we're, we're going to have to endure a lot more Leslie Rutledge before we're done. By the way, while she's ignoring payday lenders and ignoring uh, some nursing home practices I'll talk about later in Arkansas, she's busy in other states states trying to uh, carry out her conservative social agenda. In Washington state, she claims to be leading an effort to get a, the state Supreme Court there to overturn a lower court ruling that said a florist couldn't discriminate against gay customers who wanted to have their services for a same-sex wedding. Interesting stuff. John Walker and, and uh, Omabi Shakur had a news conference yesterday afternoon to talk about their arrest by police, charges that have since been dropped. They gave a little tutorial on race and economics in Arkansas and about how there's a different attitude poor, towards police, toward poor people and black people than there is toward rich white people. I think they can make a persuasive case of that. Certainly we have video evidence of it happening to John Walker, who'd have been treated even worse, he says, if, had he not been an accomplished lawyer who knew how to handle himself with police. By the way, John Walker admitted he wasn't actually filming the police, didn't know how to work the camera on his phone, but he was pretending like he did. He called in his young associate, who, associate who's more proficient in those sort of things to come help him out and get some film. Shakur, by the way, is a bright young man from Little Rock who went off to elite colleges, decided to bring his talents home, and he said, what kind of signal does this send when people is treated or treated the way he was treated for doing nothing but walking past a, a scene of white police officers arresting a black man? Food for thought for sure. John Walker also indicated yesterday that he will appeal the ruling by the federal district court price marshal this week dismissing his case against the state for taking over the school district. Walker has argued that that had discriminatory intent as well. The governor had a news conference this morning about the Buffalo River. He said he's going to appoint a committee of, of department heads in the state to exchange information about the Buffalo. Not exactly clear what the, the solid impetus of this is. It's not a regulatory thing, but we do know the Buffalo River and national treasure has been plagued in recent weeks by thick, huge amounts of algae that makes the canoeing experience anything less than pleasant and hard to get through. It's very thick in places and it doesn't smell very good either. So there's that. Planned Parenthood of Arkansas won another significant court battle here in, in Little Rock yesterday. Judge Christine Baker said that her, her case is now a class action. The state simply cannot stop providing Medicaid money to, to clients of Planned Parenthood that want to seek its medical services. This is happening all over the country. The governor of Arkansas has said he thinks he can stop this funding just because he doesn't like what Planned Parenthood does in, in other places. Uh, of course, that's not the law, and I think they'll lose this case eventually on appeal as well and spend a lot of money in the process. Too bad about that. The University of Central Arkansas is going to have a so-called forum on medical marijuana next week. Tom Courtway, the president of the university, has made a point of inviting everybody on campus to attend. There's one significant thing missing, however, and that's an advocate of medical marijuana. The three speakers, the Surgeon General, the head of the health department, and the redoubtable Jason Raper are all speaking. They're all dedicated opponents of medical marijuana. No advocates have been invited to participate. This is Tom Courtway's idea of an open forum. He's defended academic freedom there and defended a right-wing economic think tank that's housed on his campus. There's no left-wing think tanks housed on his campus, and apparently there are no medical marijuana advocates either. I'm counting on the students to step in and fill the void. Great reporting last night by KRK, and you can see something about it online at our ArkansasBlog.com. 
And that's how the nursing home lobby in Arkansas used their employees to go around and get signatures for their constitutional amendment to make it hard to sue nursing homes from who else? Nursing home patients, many of whom, according to the KARK report, probably weren't competent to sign a, a petition. There are other questions about how the signatures gathered. Not really any legal recourse on this at this point, but it gives it adds to the odor that already emanates from this amendment, which is about nothing more than increasing profits of nursing homes and making it difficult for people who've been abused to file lawsuits. This isn't really an Arkansas story, but an Alabama panel today ousted Roy Moore, the Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, from the bench because he'd been encouraging people not to obey federal court orders pertaining to same-sex marriage. He was thrown out of office one time before for insisting on keeping a Ten Commandments statue in the Justice Building of Alabama. This time around, he's suspended for the remainder of his term. The good news is he'll be too old to run again, so we may finally be done a Roy Moore. Talking about people who resist federal court orders, who want to put up Ten Commandments statues, you naturally think of Jason Raper. You think two of our Supreme Court, which was so chicken on the same-sex marriage issue that it avoided issuing a ruling and left that to the U.S. Supreme Court to do. Well, anyway, justice is done in Alabama. This weekend, lots going on. Looks like we'll have a good fall weekend. Arkansas is going to play in Little Rock. There are lots and lots and lots of seats left at War Memorial Stadium for the game against Tiny Alcorn State. So you can get some tickets for cheap. I think you'll probably find somebody outside the stadium giving them away if I, if I, if I know Razorback Games and Little Rock, the party will be on the parking lot. And finally this, just of a personal note, some hundred people are going to gather this weekend and observe the 25th anniversary of the closure of the Arkansas Gazette. Uh, that's the newspaper that I once worked for. It had quite a reputation in Arkansas. It went back many years before it lost the newspaper war. Gee, time flies, doesn't it? 25 years gone and an awful lot of good people have passed in the interim. But we'll tell some tales. Some of them might even be true. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back next week.